I want to talk to you today about being on a statin and whether the risk reward benefit is, is worth it for you or not. And unfortunately, it's something that um, a lot of cardiologists and primary care physicians are not really sharing with their patients, either because they don't know or because they are constrained quite a bit by whoever they work for to follow what's considered the standard of care, which is if you have elevated cholesterol, then you're just put on a statin and, and kind of that's that. And there's not a lot of discussion, but there, there should be a lot of discussion. So, so let's do that. So there's no decreased risk of heart disease by being on a statin. So that's number one. And for those who've never had a heart, heart attack, the, there's a 1% uh, prevention of heart disease after five years of use. So it won't prevent death, but uh, you get a 1% reward after being on it for five years. Interestingly, 50% of people put on a statin stop it after two years because there are side effects of muscle pain, muscle uh, soreness, fatigue, weakness, also brain fog, also there's an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes and uh, developing erectile dysfunction. So these are the side effects that literally half the people that are put on the drug stop taking it after two years because these side effects are really bothering them. It's also important to know, and we don't like to discuss it, but the facts are, and we've known this for a very, very, very long time, is the third leading cause of death after heart disease and cancer is um, the overprescription of medication or uh, medical error. So it's put in that category, and that's considered our third leading cause of death. And the other thing we don't like to talk about, but this is, this is our day to do so, is that here in the U.S. our healthcare expenditure is uh, the greatest in, across the developed world. It's more than $4 trillion a year. And we have the worst health outcomes. And, you know, it's, it's just the truth. We have the worst health outcomes. And yet we're spending in, you know, way in excess of any other developed nation by, by a long, a long way. So there was, so what, what is causing this, right? So they did a, a very large study. It was 231,000 people looking in over 500 hospitals, uh, looking over the course of six years for people who had a heart attack and saying, what's the driver of this? Because you know, we all know about cholesterol and we've got the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol. And so it's the bad cholesterol, the LDL being elevated that usually ends up with us on a statin because that's the driver of heart disease, supposedly. But what they discovered in the study is that having elevated LDL wasn't the driver of heart disease. In fact, it was low HDL, so low good cholesterol, and elevated uh, triglycerides. And what drives these is being overweight, eating a lot of sugar and highly processed carbohydrates and ultra processed foods, which is mostly sugar and carbohydrates. But that was the driver, not the fat, which is really interesting. And you can go back um, from your recent annual physical and your HDL should be above 50 optimally and your triglycerides optimally should be below 70. Now realize when you look at your blood test, there'll be a wider range than that, but I'm giving you the optimal so you know. Uh, there was another study that was basically the same result. Uh, no benefit was, was derived from taking statins, even, even people who had a heart attack. So uh, we talked about the side effects. Um, don't mind me, I'm looking at my notes here. Another really interesting thing is that there's something called familial hyper, meaning elevated, lipidemia, which is just cholesterol. So lipid is fat, emia in your blood. So uh, this can be familial. People who have it in their family and, and got the gene know it. Their, their LDLs can be 250 to 300, very high. And for these individuals, it's just instant statin your whole life side effects be darned, <laughs> you're doing it, right? Um, because it, it's going to so increase your risk of, of heart disease and, and heart failure. Um, but interestingly, 50% of men with this did not have an elevated risk of heart disease, and 70% of women with this genetic 
uh, defect did not have elevated heart disease. So they looked at it, and once again, the correlation was the, the elevated HDLs, I'm sorry, the decreased HDLs, so not enough of the good cholesterol and elevated triglycerides. So what's, what's, what our understanding is is that the main driver of heart disease is insulin resistance and inflammation. And it's interesting because inflammation is, is the main root cause of pretty much every disease you don't want to get, you know, including diabetes, including cancer, including dementia, including autoimmune disease. So the fact that it's inflammation is, is, is not a no-brainer per se, but we've been, we've been taught that it's, it's the fat. And, and as soon as that LDL is elevated, you, you need to decrease it with a statin. And that's just not factual, okay? You're not being given the, the right information. So uh, there was an editorial, this is way back in 2017, but a group of cardiologists who were brave enough to write this, but I'm just gonna read you the title because sometimes the title of these studies sort of says the entire thing. So it says, saturated fat does not clog the arteries. Coronary arter artery disease is a chronic inflammatory condition that can be managed by lifestyle changes. And that's the moral of the story, is that I talk a lot on this channel about hiatal hernia syndrome, normalizing gut health. When you normalize gut health, what are you gonna do? You're gonna normalize inflammation because 70% of your immune system is housed in your gut. So there it is, all beautifully tied together and uh, just something you really should know. So as I mentioned earlier, doctors, you know, they, they are constrained by um, what's considered standard of care and they don't want to lose their jobs. Um, if you are worried about your risk for heart disease, uh, you definitely get a, a calcium score. It's, it's very non-invasive. It takes like two minutes. Um, very accurate for determining your risk of, of heart disease or stroke. So that's something you can get that hopefully your doctor can order for you. And, and unfortunately, and, and I, I really dislike talking about these things, but it's, it's the case is that statins are the best selling drug in the world. Like trillions of dollars are made on this drug. And the American Heart Association receives $193 million per year from big pharma and big food. So it's not in their best interest to discuss these studies but they're the American Heart Association. It's really not fair. The other thing I learned by doing some of this research, and, and I didn't know this, is that, now I did know that studies conducted, uh, they don't have to publish their results. They can keep their results if they don't like them. Um, but, uh, and this is very clever of them in a very insidious, deceitful way, but what they can do is they can sort of pre-start the study so they don't officially start the study they go for six weeks you know this is statins in this case and they you know give people the statin and those who have side effects okay so six weeks is plenty of time to know you're going to have a side effect those people who experience side effects are eliminated from the study and because they were deemed non-compliant so yeah, their body was non-compliant because it dared to have a side effect. And then they go on with the study from there. Isn't that terrible? So um, where does this leave us? If you're on a statin, especially if you're having side effects, really try to meet with someone who does functional medicine like we do. Um, of course, me and my team are more than happy to help you. but looking at these lifestyle and dietary factors, looking at your blood work from the perspective of, do you have insulin resistance? Do you have signs of inflammation? And really working to lower those and then see if we can't wean you off that statin, do you really need it? Because if you're taking the statin thinking, oh, this is protecting me, you know, now I'm not gonna get heart disease, that's not the case. That's absolutely not the case. Um, and then on the plus side, it's really exciting to know that lifestyle and dietary changes can reverse all this and not only get your cardiac health optimized, but your overall health optimized because insulin resistance is completely reversible. You do have to be willing to do the work, but it's completely reversible. 
and of course then we have a happy gut, we have a happy immune system, and basically your risk of all-cause mortality goes down. And, and that's what we want, right? We want you to be ha happy and healthy. So um, if you like this information, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would love more people to be able to hear about this and uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, let us know if you need help. That's what we're here for. And how to contact us will be in the description.